last but not least, Jupiter's legacy. Right. Now, um, we well, we, we we talked before we we earlier before we met up online. Um, I asked you if you if you uh, read any comics for this, and you said no. Um, but you also told me that you did not see, you didn't watch the first season, you didn't watch this um this season oh, I don't at watch all. This. I didn't watch this. No, I yeah. couldn't find it. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, well, I'll I'll explain why 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 I asked if you saw it or that, right? Um, okay, well, might as well kick start off one time, right? So, see, yeah, I saw it, right? Um. The reception it has been getting thus far, it's mixed at the moment. Right. But here's the thing. I could understand why it's receiving that. And that's because I actually read the comics literally a day or two before jumping into the show here. Uh, reason me and just to kick things off is because, you know, I was, um, you know, we, 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 we reviewed Invincible season one last week. We thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I loved it. Um, but, you know, there'll be the people who will say, well, the comics were better. The comics explain Omni-Man's purpose, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, right, right. So I just wanted to be that guy to say, you know what? Well, before jumping into this new show that I kind of glimpse at the trailer at, let me, let me do a little research. Let me do a little homework and actually read the book and see where it is, right? So it's based off of a graphic novel, um, actually, a uh, series, basically, uh, written, by, um, written by Mark Miller. And, well, sorry, well, it's actually created by the two of them, but he wrote it, and Frank Quam Quitely, who actually did the artwork for um, what's his name? My um, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, All Star Superman. So yeah, they they joined forces and and made this this book here, right? Uh, there were two volumes of it, so um, I actually ran ran through all two volumes, and there's actually a spin off of it where um, which focus on the the the, the well, the older characters involved in the show here, right? Um, and I could tell that they actually draw a lot from that spin-off, right? Um, in terms of, you know, the, the backstory that we get here with us, right? Um, but before we get to the series itself, the, the comic itself, um, I would say this right off the bat, it's not the most perfectly told comic book. Um, it's not the most perfectly drawn comic, too. And, you know, some of the stuff that they, they do here, you know, the whole super, superhero deconstruction, you know, like, if, you, if you're if used to those kind of things, it wouldn't come off as, you know, groundbreaking or anything like that. But um, I, I I actually really dug this comic, too. Like, I was shocked at where they went with it, right? Um, I, I don't want I don't want any moment to compare it to Invincible, but it yeah. kind of goes into Invincible territory at, at some points, too. But what I, what I really dug about it is the idea of legacy, where, you right. know, it's these old characters, and now their, their, their progeny have powers as well, but they don't want to do the same thing that their parents do, you know what I mean? Because they just have different beliefs, right? And whatnot, right? I just like that. Like, no, it's not anything new. It's 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 a part of, you know, you know, just the culture. That's a part of superhero culture, right? But how they do it here was was really, really cool. And um, yeah, just how they explode it as well. But why I keep bringing up the, the comic here now is the strength of this show here is how they were able to take, how they were able to pretty much flesh out and expand on the world of the comics, right? Because admittedly, the comics pretty much move quickly. And I understand why, because it's a medium and you just can't spend a whole bunch of pages setting things up, which they do at some points, right? But you have to tell a story, you have to get to the, to the meat of things, right? But here with the show now, you give so much, you, you get way more um, time now in terms of understanding the characters and the motivations and all that kind of stuff. And I, I, I have to praise them for that. I have to commend them for that. Here's the problem now. It's in a medium now where people are sitting down and pretty much, like I did, binging the show out, watching the show out for, for six hours straight, which I did, right, for its eight episode run. And for some people, they're just going to watch all this character development and backstory and all that kind of stuff and find it dull, find it boring, find yeah. it just, you know, just going on with no point or no rhyme or reason. But again, I, I understand why, right? But I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a bit. So what it's about, it centers on, well, in, in the world of Jupiter's legacy, right? The world's first superheroes, right? Um, it's the six individuals, they call themselves the Union. Um, the, the head of it is um, this guy called Sheldon Samson, who, who, a.k.a. the Utopian, right? Who is played by 
Josh Duhamel, actually, uh, who okay. I, I haven't been following in quite some time. Yeah. Uh, I think the last time I saw him was, dude, what, what, which Transformers movie it was? Was it? Right, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it was the last one, the one that I hated and called yeah. the, the worst movie of the decade, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah but Right. Um, his brother, Walter Sampson, his, the, um, his alias is Brainwave. He's played by Ben Daniels. Um, Leslie Bibb um, plays um, Sheldon's wife, Grace, right? She is Lady Liberty. And you have two, sorry, you have three other characters as well. Um, but the one that they focus on the most is the character of um, George, right? Um, who becomes Sky Fox. And later on in their career as, you know, just members of the union, he is, I think, technically the first one to leave the group. And he becomes a supervillain as a result of that, right? Um, and to touch on that, though, the reason being is because, again, not new, but this is what they, they touch on in the series here. Um, Sheldon is, you know, well, okay, so quick backstory. This, all this stuff with them receiving their powers took place in the 30s, right? Um, you, you get much detail into, to, in terms of uh, what went down, why Sheldon is, why he believes the thing he believes, right? But it all boils down to the Great Depression, right? And how times were, right? His father right. dies, and he just feels like he, he needs to pick the country back up, you know what I mean? He needs to do whatever he can to, to save the country, basically, right? From all this financial ruin, right? And through some circumstances, he sees these visions um, about this island that he needs to go to, and unlike the comic, it goes even more into detail showing how he actually gets on that on a boat with um you know with, with Greece and his brother and George and all and the two other characters. And they basically head down to the island and there they are uh, treated with alien technology that grants them these um these superpowers, right? And then they come back and, you know, pretty much help stay the course of American history uh, from the thirties onward, right? Right. But where the, the show really begins now is in present day, right? Um, both, well, Sheldon and Grace, who are married now, they have two, they have two children, uh, the first being Brandon, a.k.a. the Paragon, and Chloe, who does not have a, a alias as yet, but that is because mainly she does not want to be a superhero, right? She, 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 she is a celebrity, and she's just a celebrity because she is the daughter of, you know, the, the two most powerful superheroes ever, right? But she just couldn't care less about be the superhero uh, she's a drug addict uh, drug addict sorry and you know even though she's seen her friends pretty much trying to sign up to to be part of the union um she just doesn't care i mean she she does modeling that's really where she makes her bread and butter but other than that she just doesn't care right brandon on the other hand who plays paragon he is pretty much trying to you know on the verge of filling the shoes of his dad right because you know his dad is old by now so the whole idea is that eventually when he dies when he dies now he will become the, the new utopian and there's like a great little subplot where um where his father is like kind of doubted if he if he's able to do it at all right like you know what i mean like you know what I mean? you're, you're getting beat down and you, you're not, you don't have the, the grit that you need to do this stuff right but the thing that they really touched on here with the show is the idea that um, Sheldon, aka the Utopian, um, does not want to kill at all. He he feels that all heroes must just kind of do whatever they can to set a, a proper example to the rest of the world, and that includes not killing people, uh, even if it's the the hardest supervillain. We're not gonna kill him. And right. in a great scene, a great fight scene, which is pulled from the comic. Uh, well, they actually change it from the comic. That's all I'll say. Uh, Brandon is the one who ends up killing this this character, right? And it's like, wow, you know what I mean? Like, how can my son do this all that kind of stuff? And you could see the doubt in Brandon's mind because he's he's all thinking, well, no, I need to do this because my friends got killed, right? But Sheldon's like, no, 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 you're not supposed to do this, right? So, what the rest of the stuff is in a nutshell, it involves that 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 super villain who was killed because um, there's a little reveal that actually it's a clone, right? Because the real super villain that that character who died is in this prison, this special prison for super villains called the Supermax, right? And it's this big plot involving, I don't want to say what it is, but, you know, the whole question is, you know, why why was there a clone in the first place? What's the real purpose? And it just kind of brings Sheldon and 
Walters, you know, ideologies clashing basically, right? Because yeah, Walters, the type of person is like, well, no, you know what I mean? Your your ideology is, is old, is archaic, you know what I mean? We need to move on. Even his wife and all the same, the same thing, like, you know, you, you, you know, like, we, we, we and it, it's even worse now because the younger generation is coming in as a union, they, they kind of feel the need to, to kind of, um, you know, not go as hard as it should, you know what I mean, not kill because our boss say not, we're not supposed to do that, but car, people are getting killed, right, and even people in the union getting killed because of this old ideology, you know what I mean, so it's it's that but they, they keep kind of comparing it now to um, Sheldon's experiences back in the 30s um, when he actually, before he even got the powers in the first place, and I'll stop here, right so, just to get the great out of the way though, I thought that the, um I thought, you know, for the most part, the, the acting was solid throughout, though. Um, Josh Duhamel, I, I did not expect that he would be this convincing as both a young and old Sheldon, though, but they pull that off very well. And I only know, like, after the fact that they do some de-aging, actually, I was watching the face, and I was like, oh, boy, like, either that's some great-ass makeup or it's some de-aging that they do in Dread. But I was convinced throughout Dread, like, yeah, just these characters that you see in the 30s period, yeah, I like uh, the way how they would look like in the 30s, basically. <clears throat> and also, um, the way how he looks as an as an old superhero worked as well. Yes, is a white beard and a white, you know, wig and all that kind of stuff, but the man rock it. I, I was convinced, and, you know, it, it looked really good. Um, the, the actor who plays um Walter, right? Uh, ben Daniels. Yeah, I felt that he looked the part very well, man. I, I really, really dug that. Um, also, um, Leslie Bibb, I thought that she was, she was great as well as, you know, Lady Liberty, you know, she, she is the, you know, the, the, the wife to, the, you know, to, to Sheldon and pretty much kind of tell them, yeah, you know what I mean? It's, it's this belief. Well, uh, actually I should say, I keep saying ideology. He calls it the code basically, right? It's this code that's pretty much getting superheroes killed and, you know, it, we just don't have a need for it. If we have to go this far to ensure that the world is saved or you know our our superhero brethren survive let's do it like why hold back why hold back on our powers basically right so i like her role in this right um as for the kids themselves uh chloe who is played by elena um Camporis, right if i got the name wrong forgive me um i thought that she was quite convincing as chloe right she is this drug addict and yes you know you have the Moments where you know the you know just the characters get kind of wasting away, just um you know just not doing what they're supposed to be doing, but they have well similar to the comic a, a great subplot involving um Sky Fox's son, who has this really cool power um where basically he has a device called a power rod right so in the comic it's a literal flashlight it's like a a modified flashlight basically right but in the comic basically what it is is that you shine the light and once you see where, like, let's just say you want to, you, you, you see China. If you shine it on yourself, you you are teleported there. Okay. If you shine it on somebody else, like, say, a bad guy, it takes them to that place, right? Um, but here, they, they actually make the, the power rod look really, really dope, though. And just seeing the, the teleportation stuff play out, though, I thought was fantastic, in my opinion. I, I really doubt that. It's actually one of my favorite characters in this. Uh, if I have one gripe, though, is that I felt they could have done more with uh, Brandon. Because in the comic itself, he has a much bigger role to play in all of this. Uh, a much bigger role. But here, it just he just to the sidelines. He just kind of doubts on himself and all that kind of stuff. And I see where the show going for in terms of the, the inner conflict. But I felt we could have gotten more of him. It's, there, there's literal moments where he's hardly in the, the show at all. So acting is, is solid. I thought that the, the costume design was pretty good as well. You know what I mean? There's just some great costume design. Um, the, the visual effects. It's, thankfully, it's not CW level, so that's great. Right. But in no way is this uh, MCU type. You know, we, we work with an MCU type budget, right? Um, and it shows, right? Because, yes, even in the fight that I mentioned before, you could tell, you know, green screen shit. And, you know, they're not, you, know you, 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 could, you could tell, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't know how to describe it, but you know, there's like a sort of a sort of an artificiality to what you're seeing. You know, maybe yeah. it's the the color scheme, the you know, the color correction yeah. that they use. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 you know, it, 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 like you could kind of look at it and be like, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm not a hundred percent buying into what I'm seeing here. It looks a little fantastical, but I can let that slide though because 
it's budget, right? But they put a lot of effort into at least making the visuals look great, in my opinion. And not just the the CG heavy stuff, but just everything else. And this is a very, very slick, very, very well shot looking um series, I, w- I would say, right? Um, and I would say just before I get to my to my negatives, <clears throat> is that I honestly thought that storytelling wise though and character development wise this is i thought that the show kneels it compared to the comics yeah i thought that just character de- um, development you understood uh where everybody well sorry where the major characters with the exception of brandon coming from um i want to say with the exception of brandon it's just that because we didn't get enough of brandon in it in my opinion but you got totally where Sheldon was coming from, where you see you seen his journey play out in terms of him getting his powers. Um, I thought it was well handled, well convincing, and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, you could understand why he would end up being this shell of a character who just pretty much on autopilot just repeated the same stuff. And you you could kind of understand why his kids don't care about him really, especially Chloe. You could you could totally understand it, right? And I love his uh, how they compare him to his brother Walter, how they compare to his friend George, and you know just seeing the the differences in character and all that kind of stuff. I really really dug that. That this is where the show excels in my opinion. But for me though, I have to say that the biggest strength, the, the strengths that I mentioned there, right? The storytelling, the the character development. And yes, the will be to to a point, to a point. Um, are also the show's weaknesses, uh, because as I stated before, it's the medium that the show is being presented at. Right? It's a Netflix show, right? People are gonna sit down, they're gonna watch this thing for you know six hours or whatnot, right? Like I did. But because I went in knowing what to look for, I was like, okay, they, you know, it's it's not going exactly how the book is. But I like the fact that they make this call. I like the fact they make that call. I like the fact that they expand on this, right? So case in point, without spoiling anything, I just felt like the whole island stuff um, in the comics, they just run through it quickly because it was just like this montage. We just had to tell you, oh, well, circumstances led us to this island. And literally, it was just Sheldon just having visions. That was it. But at least here, you understood why he had the visions in the first place, right? And it was just all this just to jump into the real to the story, right? Um but here though, it really does drag. And I feel it'll be even worse if you go in blind, not knowing anything about the world of Jupiter's legacy or the characters or anything like that. I yeah. imagine people will watch this and just be bored. Um and I think the reason real reason why though, unfortunately, is that they spend a lot of time on the thirties. In the thirties, sorry. It takes up about five eats of the entire season's runtime though. Like I wouldn't even say three quarters. I would say five eats. It takes up that amount. And I totally understand why it's there. It's character development, it's understanding why the characters are who they are and all that kind of stuff. And it's very well done. Eh? But it just takes up so much time in this show. And this might be something that will annoy, you know, um, viewers. I know it probably will annoy you. It's one of those shows where after a scene in the present, they will cut to the past. And then a scene to the present, then the past. And they will just keep doing that. Um, I would say, like, nearing the end of the season, it does that to a certain degree. And I was just like, all right, there's always, like, all they don't care about the present stuff, you know what I mean? But the problem is, is that the, the present stuff does not feel as... You know, you don't feel the urgency in the present stuff as as, as opposed to the past stuff, right? the past stuff, you know, there, there's a mission, there's a journey, it's getting to the island. You, you know this is going to end with them getting the powers and the union being formed. But here, though, with the present stuff, I felt that there wasn't really any sense of urgency, there wasn't really any real tension to it. It was just, we need to understand why there's a clone of this bad guy who's in prison. Yeah. And then they kind of reveal it, but it's not, because, all right, slight spoiler, that, that whole fight is just something that just kind of happens quickly over, like, three pages. It, the, the character who is involved doesn't really have anything to do with the overall story, but they make him the bad guy here because he kind of needed a villain. But really and truly, it's just a setup. oh, this character is really the villain. Man. I felt they could have just done that a lot better instead of just making this random you know, character, you know, the big trip, basically. And it wasn't really, it wasn't really him, you know. It, it just kind of felt like, oh, it, it's just a mystery trying to solve what's going on. And when it happens, it's like, 
well, cool, give him more. But by the time that's when the season ends, you know what I mean? So yeah, that was that was a that was a that, that was the ball being dropped in terms of the storytelling there. Um, but you know, like because the present stuff is really what matters. Eh? It's really what the the heart of the show is about. But because they spent so little time with it, and because they didn't really have like a proper payoff, basically, you know what I mean? Like the setup was fine, but the payoff just wasn't worth it for me. And here's the thing, right? So before I get to rating, um, I could kind of understand why it's this way, right? So without spoiling the comics for you guys, I really urge you guys to to check it out at least, right? What I'm seeing here is roughly right. So there's two volumes of the book of the series, right? I feel like I was expecting this thing to be to stop at the halfway point, right? Because it's a very, very huge moment in that halfway point that I thought the show was going to show. But it didn't do that, actually. So clearly, they're going to leave this up, hopefully, for the next season. But I could kind of understand why they didn't put it in here, right? Because, you know, and this is the problem with Netflix, because we, we saw this um, with a show that I wanted to see, but, you know, didn't get around to seeing it. Um, uh, you're probably familiar with it. I think it's called The Irregulars. That's the Sherlock Holmes thing. So, yeah. yeah. Um, quite well, like recently, like this week, the, the uh, last week, sorry, they announced that um, it's it, it got cancelled. Like the show right. literally dropped a month ago, and boom, it get cancelled, right? So I have a feeling that they didn't want to drop that moment at the very end of the season here for fear of cancellation. So you just want to give the audience enough, so yeah, at least y'all can come and say, at least they can come and say, well, you know, we kind of have to continue the story here, now, you know can't just stop it here as a sorry netflix but we have to continue the story but the fear i have now is it could still get cancelled you know what I mean? because of the reception of this beginning but i would yeah. say yes folks this needs a second season but i feel like the second season that's when the moment will drop but i felt that they could have done it here because really that is that is the kickoff point for the real story itself and here yeah. we just got a teaser with this is just it really feels like the introduction so mm-hmm. Um, roughly, this is like about two issues that we get here spread out, but is the third issue where the literal thing happens, and I felt we could have got that here. But I feel like they're trying to expand things out evenly, kind of to four seasons. Like, hopefully, you'll get three more, and then the full story will play out now. But I just have this fear because again, we we talking about Netflix. You see how they act shows like um. Like Luke Cage, like like all the the MC stuff, right? Sorry, the Marvel comic stuff, right? right? You know, from 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 Iron Fist all the way down to Jessica Jones, all of them gone. You know what I mean? Um, Iron Fist gave me, you know, he had a great season with season two. Then it got axed. We got a great season with 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 Daredevil, probably the best season ever. And then it got axed. And speaking of that, um, showrunner for that show, um, Stephen the Knight, he he worked on this show as well, right? So. You could tell he had to bring in his um, Netflix experience into the show. So that's why things feel so stretched out, right? But yeah, um, I feel that all this trying to cater to Netflix and trying not to get cancelled stuff is to the detriment of the story itself. Because, yeah, there's so much that goes on in this series, the comic book series. And this show, this season here was close to, but it was close to, but it didn't even scratch the surface, unfortunately. But this, just get to read it here, is a show that I'm going to defend. Um, I would say, though, it is a show that I would recommend to superhero TV fans and to fans of the comics itself. And just to people who are just curious um, of it, right? But I would say for those who just kind of want to have a bunch of action scenes and all that kind of stuff, you'll be very, very, very disappointed uh, with this one. Yeah. I do like the storytelling in this. I think the storytelling is what makes the show work. The character design, or uh, sorry, character development works as well too. Those are the two greatest ad- advantages this show has over its source material, and that's seen a lot, right? But unlike the source material, it takes a long while to get to the point, right? Which I felt they could have done here, but I felt it's just for fear of cancellation or just, you know, because you want to make this big, you know, this long series now, but I think it's just the, you know, just the times that we're in where, yes, you want to tell your story, but at the same time, you know, it's not just about cancellation. It's about the, the, the viewers who have to sit down and invest their time into the story, into this world that you're building here. Yes, it's cool that you, you put a lot of effort into it, but still, yeah, that kind of entertaining fans. Right? And with something like superhero, you know, TV, 
yeah, yeah, you have to give us the goods, man. And, you know, the comics have so much good in it. And good, sorry. We could have gotten just more of it in this series here. So as a whole, not a terrible way to kick things off. I would say it is probably the most ambitious um, superhero show you will see um, in a long while, actually. And I do recommend um, checking it out. But I know for some, they will just get turned off by the pace of it, um, the length of it, just kind of looking at the watch, wondering when things are going to happen, right? And I don't know how I would have felt about it if I didn't read the comics for it, but because I did, that's why I kind of have a soft spot for this season here, and I'll defend it. But it has, it is a promising season, I'll give it that. And there's so much more that can be expanded in the second season. They do leave a lot open, and I'm, I'm actually like quite excited to see where they go next. So, um, written wise, I'm gonna give this a stroke trade after light four, man. I do recommend checking it out. Um, it's very well made, very well told, uh, very well acted. I would say, um, you know, for a live action show. Um, but and I would say just coming off of Invincible, don't go in expecting Invincible. But the moment could have been there, and it would have rivaled Invincible in my opinion. And then we could have got people talking about it, and then you could have got that second season just instantly you know what i mean like I, I felt that was that was a moment they could have capitalized on but no we kind of have to stretch things out but i felt again it's fear of cancellation but i don't yeah. know where the future of this show will go but i do want it to tell its story um even if they have one more season again before they get that axe they, they really do have to kind of tell that story quickly but and you know it's, it's just one of those things i mean we could probably talk about that in another review but um where you know, you take it source material, you know you want to do it justice by telling it as long as, as it could. But, you know, in the medium of, you know, uh, you know medium cons- media consumption, sorry, it kind of run into this whole trap of, all right, well, we have to stretch things out because, you know, things need to be episodic. But at the same time, it's like, well, yeah, but what are we actually going to get to this stuff that people want to see, man? You know what I mean? So it's that kind of balance and that, that I fear the show will have to deal with. But... Yeah, I mean, for what it's worth, I think it's solid. I, I will defend it. But yeah, second season, I, I do want it to be a reality. And yeah, things really do need to pick up here. But I would say don't, don't really buy into what the critics are seeing. Especially like if you go on Rotten Tomatoes, you might, I think right now it has like a, a 46 or 50 or something like that. You know what I mean? And yeah, I mean, people will, will you know, kind of see that it's not good because it's it runs too long and blah, 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 blah. But there's a lot of promise in this show here. And I would say for the most part, yeah, check it out just, just for that. Because there's a lot of good in this. So, yeah, I would say check it out. Just don't have the, don't have the expectations too high for this one. Okay. Yeah. Hey, this is Matthew Bailey, and I hope you've enjoyed this segment of the BS Beats and Bailey podcast. If you'd like to hear the full episode, hit up my link tree. On the other side of my head are two videos you can check out. Like this video if you like it. Feel free to subscribe and hit the bell as well. Thanks for listening, and until the next one, take care. Peace.